Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to cover actuaries versus quants. Um, quants I'm going to define as financial engineers, financial mathematics, computational finance, and risk management. Um, there's a lot of different areas and different people in these degrees, but we're going to try to compare the two both academically and a little bit on the professional side as well. And then I'm going to create a second video. I've actually done a somewhat interview with somebody who answered a bunch of questions for me in a document. I'm going to answer the same questions um, for the quant background. They're an actuary. We're going to compare the results and talk about those. Um, we're also going to have a few disclaimers before this video. One disclaimer is this will be slightly biased because I am a quant. Uh, I work in the financial realm. I do not work on the actuary side, so therefore it will be somewhat biased. However, uh, I have spent quite a bit of time talking to some people I know that are actuaries, uh, digging through the websites, the exams, looking at course materials, degrees and all that, trying to really get um, as balanced a view as possible so you really get um, the trade-off between them and what they each do. The second disclaimer here is that I see a ton of people, I'm gonna just pocket these and say these are vastly those in school um, or those that have graduated and are working in the industry that have less than five years experience. Um, but these people are out there trying to tell you like this degree is great, this is the best degree. If you have this other degree, you're dumb. Um, I think this is complete nonsense. Both degrees add a lot of value. Degrees in general are very specialized for very specific jobs and careers. Um, everything has value in some way, shape, or form. So no, I do not think one is better than the other. I think it really comes down to what do you want to do for a career. So let's dive on in here and compare these two just a little bit, uh, not in great detail, because if I did great detail, this could be a three, four hour video, and I'm sure none of you would wanna watch that. So again, let's dive on in. All right, so first, just breaking these down, to be an actuary, the bare minimum is an undergraduate degree, typically in math, statistics, or actuarial sciences, um, and then you have to pass all these exams to be an actuary. Um, a quant, on the other side, has a minimum of a master's degree, where most jobs prefer a PhD. However, you have to have a master's or PhD, typically in um, financial engineering, computational finance, financial mathematics, uh, statistics, even physics, for example. Um, they have to have a master's to PhD. So right off the bat here, um, this adds kind of a barrier to entry in both tracks in both careers, which is why I think it's funny when people try to say like, oh, if I'm from one side, you know, I'm better or smarter and I can switch sides. No, it's really, really difficult. It's very challenging. Um, the actuaries have to have the exams. So for quants to be able to go to the actuarial side, uh, you would have to somehow figure out how to pass all these exams and get the experience required to be an actuary. Um, on the flip side though, if you're coming with a bachelor's degree from the actuarial sciences, it's going to be nearly impossible to get in because you don't even have a master's degree Degree. And yes, you can get a master's in actuarial sciences and that would help leverage you to get in. Um, however, that being said, um, those that are actuaries who want to be actuaries and you're graduating as a student, you would have to get a master's to get over to the financial engineering realm. But then all those exams that you have that typically companies pay for or help you pay for or they pay you based on how many exams you pass, we don't do that on the quant side. Um, you would essentially be forced to pay for your own education in most scenarios. So it's kind of a barrier of entry that it's costly to switch from one to the other. So it's best to choose what you want to do. Actuaries, what do they actually do? They focus on insurance, health insurance, like corporate risk policies. They're focused around the realm of insurance pensions and all that for the most part. Yes, they've added machine learning and data science and they've added uh, financial quantitative methods to their exams, um, which is fine, but the vast majority of them will be working in this realm. Yes, some are working in data science. Again, working in data science, though, I'm sure they don't really care that you are an actuary. They just care that you have the statistics and math background. Um, so they're going to focus on that side, right? They're going to be focusing on those insurance and pension types of work. Again, this work requires knowledge of the insurance industry, the health industry. Um, there's a lot involved into it and it's probability and statistics based. And yes, you can do financial planning as a lot of your work focuses around financial markets and economics, as you'll see in the exams. Um, a financial engineer or quant, on the other hand, um, there's a variety of different areas you can focus in and I have videos on this which you can look at through my channel, um, but they're going to be focusing on derivative products, statistical arbitrage, trading, uh, and risk management in a very quantitative statistically based method. 
So when you look at this from the outside, it looks like, okay, actuaries, probability statistics, some finance, some economics, uh, financial engineers are gonna have statistics, probability, um, finance and economics, but looking at kind of the proportions is where you get the differences. So actuaries are gonna take a, a variety of exams. There's two routes you can take here. Uh, the first one is the life and health insurance actuary, which is through the SOA, which is the Society of Actuaries. Uh, the alternative is the property and casualty insurance actuary. And this is done through the CAS, which is the Casualty Actuary Society. Um, the life and health insurance path, there are 10 exams. Seven of these exams are the core exams. And then you need three fellowship exams, which we're gonna cover here in a second. There's also a certified enterprise risk actuary, so the CERA, that is also through the SOA. And then the other path, as we mentioned, property and casualty path. Again, there are 10 exams that you have to take. Um, again, these are going to focus you and specialize you in different areas. So if you look at these exams here, most of these are going to be focused around like finance, traditional finance, um, and insurance in those types of areas. The exams, for example, for the SOA are going to be mathematical statistics, economics, accounting and finance, probability, financial mathematics, investment and financial markets, long-term actuarial mathematics, short-term actuarial mathematics, statistics for risk modeling, predictive analytics, um, fundamentals of actuarial practices, and association and professionalism course. So these are more like a designation. So I would compare these somewhat to like a CFA. Um, that being said, there are a lot more exams here for being an actuary than there are for actually being a CFA holder. Um, but again, a lot of these are focused around traditional finance, traditional instruments, uh, insurance products, again, using financial derivatives um, for hedging risk and reducing risk. Um, and the one thing I was gonna point out here is I know everyone's gonna like try to dig this out and say like I missed this, but um, one of the fellowships that you can do through the fellow of the Society of Actuaries is the Quantitative Financial Investments Advanced Exam. Um, this exam covers advanced topics such as approaches to volatility modeling, the standard yield curve. Um, it has a whole section on uh, credit risk. Uh, it has a whole section on liquidity risk. It has a section on additional quantitative techniques. It has behavioral finance. It has alternative assets. Uh, it has liability manufacturing and management. And that kind of makes up this exam. Um, the reason I'm gonna tell you and kind of contrast this a bit, financial engineering is one and a half to two years of very in-depth rigor on stochastic calculus and programming. So if you look over here, for example, like at Columbia's program, you'll see there's Monte Carlo simulation, financial engineering, continuous time, statistical analysis and time series, mathematics for financial engineering bootcamp, just helps prepare you. Uh, optimization models and methods, stochastic models, foundations of financial engineering. Uh, and then there's some other things like professional development and whatnot. And then if you look at similar programs like Carnegie Mellon's and Baruch's, Baruch's has a lot of C++. Uh, if you look at Carnegie Mellon's here, financial computing one, again, as it points out, you know, the C++ mechanisms that support programming, such as pointers, dynamics, memory allocation, recursion, structure, simple classifications. Again, there's financial computing one, two, three, four, five, two financial data sciences, a financial time series, a financial optimization, linear algebra, and the list goes on. So what's the difference, right? This is kind of where people are getting stuck at. And I see a lot of people saying, Dimitri, I can be a financial engineer and a quant and I'm just gonna get the actuarial designation. No, you're not because getting over across the stream, as I mentioned, is very challenging because A, you need to get the master's degree to even be considered. Um, the real core difference and I think this is the entire focus of this video is pretty simple. Actuarial sciences, as you see from all the exams they take, is they focus on a breadth of topics, a breadth of information, right? They're looking at all these different areas. And yes, it takes years to take the exams and to learn all the information, which is fine. But financial engineers and quants are really going very, very deep in a very, very narrow path. So when you go and you learn like continuous time, right, in financial engineering, you're gonna have a book like this. And this is The Arbitrage Theory in Continuous Time by Bjork, right? It's, it's I think like 500 pages essentially. Um, it's a lot. And then you're gonna have other books that look the same. So these ones are bi like Binomial Asset Pricing Models, Continuous Time by Shreves. 
They look the same, but they're very similar, but different teachers are gonna use them in different aspects. A lot of financial engineering programs bring in industry practitioners and teach you things that are not in books. Uh, the Rough Volatility Model by Jim Gatherall is a key example in Baruch's program. But they're looking at something very narrow, only a few topics, which is derivative, financial pricing model, statistical arbitrage, and they're going very deep into these programs for a year and a half to two years. Uh, these cost, again, like $70,000, and it's very, very focused. Again, if you go to the actuarial route, right, you're gonna have to take the economics, the accounting and finance, the probability, the financial mathematics. And to be quite frank with you, most of these exams, these general exams are general topics. These aren't very rigorous topics. Like your probability exam is gonna be nowhere near someone who has a master's degree focusing in probability or someone who has an economics background is going to be far, far more educated in economics than someone with you know, just the VEE economics exam. Um, so just pointing this out right, the actuaries have a very big advantage here in the fact that they have a very thorough, in-depth view of insurance and then they have this breadth of information across the industry and how to link all these parts and pieces together. Um, on the flip side, it's like I pointed out, financial engineering is gonna be very, very focused. So even when you start looking at uh, this you know, investment side of quantitative finance, something here that like, I'd like to point out from my expertise and my knowledge here is that there's the second topic here is credit risk. Um, you're covering market credit risk. So you're covering in here like CDSs, you're covering MBS, so mortgage-backed securities, credit default swaps. You're covering the generic market products. Something I don't see on here, I don't see like the genie tables, I don't see the KS analysis for credit models, I don't see you building credit models to price loans, uh, I don't see PDO, so points to double the odds. All of this information is something that you're not going to get in this designation. You're not going to learn this in depth. Uh, there are a lot of risk management programs popping up that are financial engineering and risk management focused. Again, they're going to focus deep on this and they're gonna know a lot about it, but they're gonna have no clue about the actuarial sciences side. And just to put a little spin here, the Certified Enterprise Risk Actuary designation, uh, it's seven exams, it covers a lot of the same overlap as the other ones. Um, but to be frank with you, this isn't going to be any different than essentially getting a FRM. So the FRM again is very broad, very general. I do think that the CERA, so the Certified Enterprise Risk Actuary designation is going to go deeper and have more information and be more challenging than the FRM by far. However, if you have a master's degree in an FRM, you're not gonna be comparable. Um, that with the master's degree in this FRM is going to be a lot more qualified to work in the risk realm, doing risk in a banking setting. Now, if you wanted to do risk management in a corporate manufacturing setting, the actuarial science majors are gonna have a lot more intuition, a lot more knowledge, a lot more training and relevant modeling practices and education to do that. So again, I get, I get confused here and people say like, oh, Dimitri, they're similar. They're not really that similar in the fact that Actuaries are studying on actuarial topics. They're focusing on you know, insurance policies, on health insurance, on pensions, even financial planning. But a lot of their education here, when you look at these exams like economics and finance, those are traditional finance. Those are traditional education for business. We're typically quantitative finance professionals or quants, financial engineers here. They're not really gonna get that much finance. They're gonna brush through it. And a lot of them will end up backing that up with a CFA. But if you just have a quant degree and you just have the actuarial de like designation and all that, they're very different. One's very, very quantitative on like a very, very narrow set of topics. You're not gonna be able to jump around industries very easily. We're on the flip side of that, right? The actuaries are gonna have this breadth of information and a lot of focus on the insurance industry. But again, jumping between them is very challenging and very difficult. And I think the strengths and weaknesses of each program, again, is that like how much you focus on how many different topics kind of trade off. So now looking at the compensation here, I think it's something else to bring up. A lot of people somehow think, or at least I've heard actuaries make less than quants. I don't think this is true from the data I've seen. Um, this table here, I'm gonna put a link below as well. It shows something that's important to actuaries, which is the two kind of dynamics of how much experience you have and how many exams you've passed. Um, at the bottom end, you're making between 48 and 65, and that ranges all the way up to like 553 plus. So again, any career, you could be like the rock star and make a lot of money. But again, I think the table in the middle here shows a better indication of how many exams you need to pass, how much experience you need. And then comparing this to financial engineering, a lot of the websites don't give you actual 
data in this type of format over years of experience and everything. Um, I would say they're fairly similar given your educational background and experience. So financial engineers typically start at like 70 to 80 grand and go up. Uh, some of them start at 100, 120, something like that. But you're saying like that's not comparable to the 48,000 for an actuary. You are right, but you have to realize these quants have PhDs and masters, so they have the four-year undergrad. And again, the four-year undergrads can be the exact same between them. So you get a statistics undergrad in either case. One goes to financial engineering, one goes on to take the exams and be an actuary. So when you consider time and experience here, I think they match up fairly well. Um, quants, again, on the other hand, the industry is getting extremely competitive. There's all these generic fake financial engineering programs popping up. Um, financial markets are starting to calm down. Regulation for risk is going down. And so at the end of the day, there's not very many jobs on the quantitative finance side as there are on the actuary side. And so that being said, there might be some discrepancy there as well. But overall, I think both careers make good money. Both careers, again, focus on statistics and probability. The difference is quants typically focus on financial engineering and financial products very deeply in a very quantitative manner, such as statistical arbitrage, hedge funds, derivative pricing, um, that type of realm, where on the flip side of this, actuaries, if they end up going to the finance side, would be doing more like financial analytics on the more traditional business side. And just something here to point out before I wrap this up, um, there is an exam here. It's called financial mathematics exam. I would assume this would be financial engineering based. But when you start diving into this, right, on the actual exams, it's time value of money, annuities, cash flows of payments that are not cont contingent, uh, loans, bonds, general cash flows and portfolios, immunization, interest rate swaps, determinants of interest rates. All that stuff is traditional finance stuff. I actually learned all this material in some depth uh, with a finance undergrad degree. So again, the actuaries are focusing on insurance, traditional finance. Again, they might be doing a lot of analytics in traditional finance realms, but seeing them in the financial engineering realm is not as common. Um, yes, there are some, I'm not gonna say there are not, because a lot of them end up going through all this work. They work at banks, they work you know, in these different areas, they get all their exams, and then they realize maybe they would like to switch tracks and they end up switching over. However, at that point, they typically go back and get a master's degree. So they're somewhat comparable to the quants in that realm. Anyways, I'm just gonna wrap it up here because I feel like I'm rambling a bit. I mean, you get the point, right? Actuaries are insurance-based. Yes, they can do other things. Yes, there are barriers of entry for them switching. The flip is true as well. Financial engineers are very focused in one area. They don't have the breadth. Uh, they don't have the insurance experience. And so it's very hard for them to switch because they don't have the designation. Um, I'm gonna have this second video coming out hopefully sometime close to when this video comes out. Um, kind of comparing like the work-life balance and the day-to-day -day challenges somewhat of the job. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.